The adoption of cloud-native processes and associated technologies is accelerating within the communications service provider community. And to help find out why, I'm speaking today with Paul Miller. He's the Chief Technology Officer at Wind River. Paul, thanks very much for joining us today. So to start, can you just tell us how Wind River is using a cloud-native approach to help service providers deploy 5G? Well, thanks, Ray. Uh, the answer to your question is it really starts with a strategy. A successful 5G strategy needs to incorporate technologies that can take advantage of ultra low latency response time. Uh, edge computing has emerged as the key to enabling and monetizing real time applications at the edge of the network that depend on such things. Uh, we've also found that uh, at the edge, a significant set of uh, technology requirements exist around cloud native where you now have to deploy a fully distributed cloud across thousands of sites. And that's a, a significant challenge for legacy technologies, such as uh, a vanilla Kubernetes and OpenStack implementation. Uh, so we founded, uh, with other partners in the industry, uh, under the OpenStack Foundation, a new initiative called Starling X as an open source activity. Uh, and our uh, working with the open source community there uh, created a purpose-built cloud-native solution that was specific for solving the problems that we just talked about, uh, le leveraging the uh, open source technologies such as Kubernetes, but wrapping them with a framework that en enables them to be a fully distributed cloud solution. And this is really the reason why T-Systems and Verizon uh, selected us for their deployments. That's great. Uh, and you mentioned Verizon there, Paul, and that particular operator recently issued a press release about how it had completed the first fully virtualized end-to-end -end 5G data session. And Wind River was one of the companies that helped Verizon to enable that. So what can you tell us about that particular 5G milestone? Yes, yeah, certainly. So that's a, a very exciting thing for us, as you can imagine. And we're certainly very proud to be uh, selected by Verizon for that activity. And uh, we worked with other partners in that space, uh, such as Intel and Samsung, Samsung to bring a, a fully integrated solution to uh, Verizon for deploying their national 5G network. Uh, as we work with them, obviously Verizon is interested in uh, a cloud-native solution, a highly distributed edge cloud that can enable a full 5G infrastructure deployment. Uh, and as a result of the technology that Wind River provides, uh, they came to us to provide that cloud infrastructure, and we're working with them uh, to take that cloud-native approach and bring it across the entire network for their national 5G deployment. Uh, we really provided Verizon that full uh, cloud-native Kubernetes and container-based solution that enables us to um, virtualize their entire network infrastructure and do so while providing ultra low latency and the characteristics operationally that are needed to run such a network efficiently. Now, you also previously mentioned T systems there. What can you tell us about the project you're involved with them? Uh, yeah, T systems uh, as well, another uh, exciting opportunity for our company, uh, working with them around uh, Enterprise Edge and Virtualized Edge Compute in a cloud-native implementation. Uh, T-Systems is, of course, the enterprise arm of Deutsche Telekom. Uh, they selected us to provide software infrastructure for an edge compute capability that's used in a variety of industries. Uh, they call this solution the Edge Air platform, and it's a highly scalable platform that ranges from very small embedded devices at the edge all the way up to highly scaled compute systems. Uh, and we're doing work there around um, capabilities such as augmented reality and virtual reality with uh, GPU acceleration at the far edge for industrial case, uh, use cases, as well as autonomous vehicle and you know uh, uh, logistics within the industrial sector. So a tremendous amount of exciting opportunity there. Uh, really the same technology that we talked about using for Verizon for 5G is equally applicable to an enterprise edge use case uh, where you need to deploy compute infrastructure at the far edge and manage all of those enterprise sites from a single pane of glass. And T-Systems found that capability attractive, and we're excited to head into deployment with them. So a couple of interesting examples of how you're interacting and already working with some service providers. What do you see as the, the, the key benefits and attributes of, of cloud native and distributed computing for communication service providers? Yeah, so we really see that as two critical categories. One is really on the technology domain. Uh, you have a set of characteristics that are really required for 5G, mobile edge compute, and far edge distributed cloud infrastructure. Things like the ability, the ability in the cloud to natively support uh, technology accelerators, such, such as the Intel Vista Creek 
FPGA acceleration card for forward error correction and VRAN acceleration, or things like NVIDIA GPU for AR and VR acceleration at the far edge, as well as core technology capabilities around a distributed cloud, right? That uh, it has the capability to be geo-distributed across thousands of sites uh, and support that from a high availability perspective. The second category that's really important is the operational aspect. It's one thing to deliver a set of technologies that can be used for 5G. It's an entirely different thing to provide a service provider with a tool set that's highly automated, including things such as automated software upgrade and zero touch deployment, that's critical to effectively scale a multi-thousand node cloud, even to tens of thousands of nodes, and make sure that the service provider can operationally manage that. So those, these are key aspects of a cloud native technology that is really designed to solve a distributed edge cloud and 5G problem set. Okay, great. Um, so there's a lot going on in this domain. Uh, and of course, it's a very crowded market. And there's a lot of companies out there now saying that uh, they can provide cloud native infrastructure to communication service providers. How does Wind River differentiate itself in this market? Yeah, so that, that's actually a great question. Uh, it, there's, there's a few points there that really help us answer that question. The first is that if you look at Wind River's history, we've really been um, in the market in places where safety critical, high availability, ultra high software quality solutions are required. Places like aerospace and defense and industrial and automotive markets as well as telco. And in providing solutions like that, we're very focused on those bespoke customer needs. Uh, rather than building a, um, a technology solution that's really targeted at IT and enterprise back office as many of our competitors do, we are laser focused on the requirements that are appropriate for the target market that we're, we're targeting, right? And that uh, for 5G, we've talked about ultra low latency and operational characteristics. These are very unique capabilities, but they all come from being focused on the customer needs as to what the service provider needs to manage. Um, the other piece is that we have a very differentiated technology. If you look at uh, Wind River Cloud Platform and the, the capabilities that we have that are tuned to 5G, that are tuned to ultra low latency, high availability, accelerator support, distributed cloud management, zero touch deployment, a set of technology differentiators that really distance us from the competitors for a solution that can be deployed in a live network. Um, the third point is really that we make operations significantly easier. Uh, if, as I mentioned in the previous question, with the uh, operator characteristics like a single pane of glass to manage the entire deployed network or a live software upgrade that can, can be orchestrated across multiple cloud instances from that single pane of glass. Uh, these are capabilities that touch on a high level of automation. Another example would be zero touch deployment where you have potentially thousands of sites that need to be turned up in a very short period of time. You cannot be depend, uh, dependent on um, staff to do that manually, right? You need a high level of software automation to do that. So providing those operations assistance and a real uh, eye towards solving those customer centric problems is a, a key capability. And, and then finally, uh, we couldn't leave this question without talking about the fact that we are open source and open community. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of activity and leadership in ORAN, uh, in OPNFE, in ONAP, in, in uh, OpenStack Foundation, as well as uh, CNCF for Kubernetes. And uh, it's a real serious contrib contribution with code, uh, personnel investments, and leadership participation in those activities. This gives us a, a unique view into the best of open source. Uh, at the same time, providing a licensed binary distribution of these products that can have a guaranteed SLA for five and six nines high availability uh, deployment in a carrier network. So the kind of best of both worlds where you have an open source, you know, uh, crowd sourced uh, innovation path, uh, but then driven to a, uh, a hardened binary that can be deployed in a live carrier network. Okay, excellent. Uh, lots of differentiators there. Um, mm -hmm. Now for the communication service providers, you know, they're, they're tackling a lot of things right now, dealing with a lot of strategic decisions. Uh, why and how is cloud native important and critical right now to CSPs? Well, we're certainly really uh, in interesting times today, right? And uh, Wind River, as a result of that, uh, actually commissioned a survey earlier this year. Uh, and the purpose was to gauge the impact of COVID-19 on businesses. And we found that 90% of those surveyed had to undergo some change in their business processes. And and of course, to all of us watching this, that's not a surprise, right? There's been tremendous impact from COVID-19. Where it gets more interesting is those who are focused on using this time to digitally transform their business rather than simply survive. They're taking advantage of the time period. And 
we're seeing uh, 50% more focus in the areas of such as 5G and containers and cloud native technology. Um, and the majority of respondents also indicated that will, there will be an increased importance on open source code process. In fact, across multiple industries, not just telco, one in, th one in three 5G projects have been accelerated as a result of COVID-19. And that's a pretty significant change just as a result of that. In telco specifically, over 70% of projects are now on a fast track. And there's other, uh, actually quite a few other findings and, and you can uh, uh, reach out to Wind River and we'll be glad to share those with you. The point I'm trying to make though, is that not even a global pandemic will slow down technology advancement. And if anything, it has shown us how important it is to be flexible and digitally connected. Uh, cloud native technologies are at the core of this advancement. And of course, Wind River is at the forefront of making this advancement happen. Okay, that sounds like a, a fantastic survey full of, uh, of really interesting results. So thanks for sharing that with us, Paul, and also for sharing Wind River's approach to cloud native for the CSP sector. So Paul, it's been great speaking with you today. Thank you. Thanks very much. It was great to be here.